Good morning, everyone. This is Gary Kay, and obviously you're watching a video version of my Rants and Rays podcast. I'm excited to be joined today uh, with uh, Dave Labuskas. This is CEO of Avixa. Dave, good morning. How are you? I'm good, Gary. Thank you. Good morning to you. Good morning to you as well. And um, we're, this is kind of a six-month check-in. Uh, we'll talk about Infocom in just a second as a show, but Infocom became Avixa right about six months ago. Uh, I wanted to check in with you and see how things are going and uh, kind of get an update for the industry. Thanks. I appreciate it. I mean, it's hard to believe it's been six months already. Uh, in one hand, it seems like it was yesterday. And then on the other hand, it seems like it was six years ago, not six <laughs> months ago. Um, you know, the, the, the name of Vixa is gaining recognition. Um, the uh, message of the Audiovisual and Integrated Experience Association and talking about those two aspects are really three aspects, AV, integrated experiences, and being an association. It's, it's really taken traction. You were uh, in Amsterdam, albeit for a short period of time, saw the uh, Avixa booth there. Yeah, very we, impressive. Thank you. Really um, helped to uh, underscore the one of the key reasons we did this, which was to differentiate between the Avixa as an association and Infocom as a show brands and help uh, organizations, help people that had not really thought of us as their industry association, recognize that we are an association uh, greater than uh, only our trade shows. Yeah, and, and let's, we'll talk about Infocom in just a second. And we should talk about Infocom because, uh, because it is earlier this year. And I think people might not realize uh, that it's the first week of June this year, basically. Uh, that's a little earlier. So we'll talk about that in just a second. So what for those people that don't really understand uh, Vixa is the association and Infocom has now become the show and the association is doing more than just the show. I mean, you've got the education and certification program, uh, you've got the outreach programs. And then part of this whole concept of Vixa was to try to bring more end users to the, to the market and really understand how we fit into the world of technology uh, in more than just a meeting room. Yeah, I mean, it was it was partly to bring more more end users in, but a lot of times I get a little bit um, hesitant to to emphasize that because that suggests that there's a less of an emphasis on the current membership, and I look at it as more broadening the conversation. I mean, we talked a couple years ago about the exceptional experience and the need to to underscore the fact that audiovisual technology is about creating exceptional experiences and that that needs uh, content space and technology as three levers in order to actually achieve. And when you, when, you, when you own that statement, that it's content space and technology working together, then to really deliver that experience, you need to have people that know content space and technology. And the idea with Avixa is to open the door and put out a welcome mat to the other parts of those levers, the content people and the space people. Um, We've got technology, we know technology, we all grew up as technologies, we're all either continuing or recovering techno <laughs> um, We Some of us are learning content, some of us have focused on and tried to learn space, but we really need to bring those experts into the conversation and helping them understand that we're about integrated experiences makes a much more resonating message. Um, yeah, I, we, we talked about, and I know you're aware of a lot of work we're doing um, in vertical industries to elevate the awareness mm -hmm. of AV and its strategic value. Um, I spent last year, I think I probably went to 10 different industry events for the International Retail Designers Conference, the Boutique Designers of Hospitality in New York. Um, the American Bankers Association, and we're going to these associations and to these meetings, to these conferences, where those designers are at, where those decision makers are at, and we're helping them understand what AV can do to achieve the outcomes that they want in their businesses. And, I, and, and, and the outreach that we would expect to get from that would be the market would grow. Right, right. Part of our definition of success is to be a catalyst for market growth. I mean, it, mm -hmm. I remember a couple of years ago after meeting with uh, 10, 15 senior executives on the marketing side of some of our largest exhibitors in Europe and well, largest global exhibitors, but met in Europe. And, and I really sort of quipped on the way out the door. I can't believe we got away with not doing this for 75 years. Um, 
part of what an industry association should do is contribute as a catalyst for market growth. And the way you do that as an association is not by launching new products, obviously, right? That's up to our members to do. It's up to our members to deliver great work. What it is for us to do is to be the amplifier of the value of AV. Um, once we've elevated the perception of value in the decision maker's eyes, then it's up to our exhibitors to go and get that dollar. But it's up to us to try to create a greater amount of wallet share, if you will. Yeah, and so uh, you know, obviously, the the core membership of of what was Infocom now Avixa A V I X A uh, is has, and has always been the integration community. Um, and so, how did they um, become more involved? I mean, like a, as I grew up in the industry, I was very involved in the educational side and trying to develop the educational side. But there's a lot more going on than just education. Obviously, you'd like for people who have the expertise to teach their expertise and there's op uh, ample opportunities for them to do that infocom and other events but how else can they get involved like how can they participate in this outreach at these events that you're going to and and how can they uh sort of take advantage of this growth opportunity well uh we're reaching out uh if if um as uh, and here's the verticals we're working on right now uh higher education financial services hospitality retail sports and entertainment and transportation the sports okay. and entertainment and transportation are three that we added for 2018 the other four we started last year if if you as an integrator or a solution provider have great case studies about what you've done to create outcomes in those marketplaces use us to be your platform we'll we'll profile that case story we'll um, put it up on our web page we may ask you to participate in a panel with me in presenting that to the, the vertical. We had uh, diversified with us in Chicago when we talked to American Bankers Association about the work they've done with Bank of America. I mean, I think we, our, our story is only as deep as the examples we can provide. There's one thing about me standing up in front of a room of 200 bankers and saying, AV is really important. You should spend more on AV. Um, there's a completely different message that's passed when we bring a series of members up and actually present cases on how the bank um, ideated about what they wanted to accomplish in their space, how they wanted to be a part of their community, and how AV made that possible. Yeah, and uh, in addition to those types of outreach opportunities, um, you're also uh, doing, talk about the, the, the event that you're doing next month and sort of what, what what that entails and the, the, the speaking specifically, what group of that, the six or eight areas that you said you're reaching out to market segment, six segments, um, which one does that, uh, which one does that address and, and how could they get involved with that specifically? <laughs> well, that suggests I'm doing an event next month. I mean, we've got, uh, we've got E4 next month. We've got, yeah. um, I'm going to be in LA at BD West, which is yeah, BD West is what I was referring to. Sorry, you were talking about um, BD West is uh, boutique design is what BD stands for, and it's for hospitality industry designers. And we're going to present there a panel of operators, consultants, and integrators that talk about what type of outcomes different properties wanted to have with regards to their hotel space, their hospitality space, and how AV helped them achieve that. I'm not positive of the details of the panel yet, but typically what we've done at these type of events is try to show three different scales, sort of small, medium, large. Um, if you use a retail example, it might be kiosk, mm -hmm. storefront, and shopping mall. Not that they, anybody calls them malls anymore. <laughs> um, and, and having the three designers and or integrators that were involved in those scales so that people can see that they can create really amazing outcomes with AV without having to spend really amazing amounts of money. Um, that it's not necessarily that you're equated to each other. Yeah, and, and timing wise, this is really good because our industry, uh, I mean, let's face it, the, the time I've grown up in the industry, we're very focused on products. Uh, now it's moving more towards technology and spaces, I guess you'd say, where, where we're sort of bringing the technology to the space rather than just putting the technology in the space. Um, and, and also affecting the space itself with some of the new technologies like RFID and digital signage connectivity and, and the connectivity to the rest of the environment. And even in a meeting room, the same kind of situation where we're doing more than just video conferencing and, and collaboration in a meeting room, we're able to bring that outside the space around the world 
And our industry is the industry that, that can do that. Uh, and I think a lot of times, don't you find a lot of times the end user is saying, okay, th thank, thank, thank you for coming because we had no idea who we were supposed to call. Like they, they go to the IT department, they expect the IT department to know how to do this and the IT department doesn't even know necessarily who to call, like what the next step would be because it's not the same thing as integrating a computer network. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and it's, you know, if you don't like change, we're in the wrong industry, right? I mean, it, <laughs> it's, it's the change is all across both business model components and who the buyer is, right? So even tracking from our perspective down, who's making the buying decisions? Is it a CEO? Is it a CIO? Is it a CMO, chief marketing officer? Um, the, the buying decision shifting around the organization, where it shifts is based on the outcome that the organization wants. So if the focus is on efficiency and scale, it's probably sitting in the CIO's office. If it's on brand and customer engagement, it's probably sitting in the CMO's office. We're even seeing some of it's happening in the HR offices at this point when you start looking at employee engagement. And then that crosses to the marketing department because employee engagement is about brand and brand promise. Um, what we're, and all of those people have an, a finite amount of budget to spend each year. And, and there's no money growing on the tree in the backyard, contrary to our kids' belief. Um, it, it's a certain amount of money. And so what you're looking at is how do you convince and or educate them to recognize that a larger portion of their budget should be spent on AV solutions? Well, the only reason they would do that is if they felt they would get a greater return on that investment. And that's up to us to communicate. It's not up to us to communicate the difference between um, HD, 4K, and 8K. That's for us to know, but those buyers don't care. Those right. buyers care about whether or not an outcome is going to be able to be achieved or to be furthered. Yeah, and I think a lot of cases, uh, what we have an opportunity to do now is what we haven't had in the past and that we go in, we get called in to do a meeting room and we can also, by the way, do the furniture and we can also do the acoustics and we can also do the control of the environment, not just the meeting room. And in a lot of cases, they don't even know that exists. And I think a show like Infocom, which we'll turn our attention to now, is, is the reason why uh, it has been so successful and has continued to grow like ISE has, uh, the show we just uh, all returned from uh, earlier this month. Um, Infocom, still called Infocom, it's, it's owned by Avixa. Um, so Avixa, to get involved in Avixa, go to avixa.org, A-V-I-X-A.org. Um, Infocom is still Infocom and there's, it's still the show. Uh, and that's what everyone knows Infocom for uh, the brand. Uh, so go to infocom.org. So the show is earlier this year. It's basically, I think the sixth through the ninth, I think of the actual exhibition dates. Um, and it's in Vegas. Uh, so we know it's going to be a big show. It's going to be a big growth year for the show because it always happens when it's in Vegas. Um, what can we expect? What exciting things do, does Infocom have planned and sort of how will this will be a rolling out party, a, co a complex rolling out party for you because you've got a brand, both Infocom and Avixa in the same place. Yeah, it's uh, infocomshow.org. If you go to infocom.org, you get redirected to avixa.org now. Okay. So it's infocomshow.org. You're right. It's the first week of June and it's in Vegas and it's our first infocom as avixa. And uh, we're completely jazzed about that. We're, um, we're going to, the, the portion of the brand at this point, every, most people have now heard of Vixa. What, what we have two layers of messaging that need to happen here at this point. One is that it's more than a name change, that it's about um, restaking and re-owning audio as a profession. And it's about emphasizing that the integrated experience is what we create. Um, the Infocom show itself, uh, continues to evolve the, the, the magic and challenge of a show, a trade show, is the protection of the familiar with the introduction of novelty, right? You don't want to go to the same show you went to last year or the year before, but at the same time, you want to see a lot of the same things. You want to be able to have access. You want to have familiarity. So we're going to have some of that familiarity, but, you know, the education program is completely uh, re- reconsidered and reinvented. There's an immense amount of new classes that are focused in on these outcomes. Um, the Avixa presence at the show will uh, start with a um, killer opening party that we're taking um, an entire uh, nightclub for that's just jam-packed full of experience and AV. Um, 
We have, uh, I don't think we're ready to make the announcement yet, but we formed a really interesting partnership with another organization that I think is gonna really underscore the uh, importance of experience as part of our industry. Um, it, you know, the, the show is uh, the biggest gathering of our membership every year in North America. We, we actually considered launching a VIXA at last year's show um, and decided not to because it's actually our exhibitors party, not oh, ours. It's too busy. <laughs> the show's too busy. It's their stage. It's like yeah. uh, going to your friend's wedding and announcing your engagement. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's their it's a good party. analogy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's their space to announce what they're bringing out. It's their space to reinforce their relationships. What I am excited about is we're bringing back Tide again. Tide, the mm -hmm. Technology Innovation Design and Experience Conference, is focused right at those content and space designers, bringing different people to the show. We've got the Integrated Life Pavilion there for the first time. I think, well, you're going to quote me because we're being recorded here, but I think it's sold out um, with regards to exhibitors to really talk about the ubiquity of AV and that mm -hmm. AV is enabling outcomes in our life regardless of where you are, whether you're at work, whether you're at home, whether you're in between the two. It's going to be a great show. Yeah, and I'm excited about the Integrated Life Pavilion, but also excited about the Innovations uh, Showcase again. Um, I'm a judge at that again, and I love going through that because you, you get to discover hidden mushrooms, right? Little things that you would never have seen if it weren't for that little area where they're really highlighted. Uh, in that area. And I'm excited to be part of that. And I appreciate y'all asking me to be a judge again for that because I've really enjoyed that. And I found some products that I would not have normally found and that have become big products in the industry, which is, which is always fun to write about. Um, the the uh, integrated life, let me ask you about that because obviously there's a perception that that's competitive. Some people have a perception that's a little bit competitive to Cedia, but in reality, what you're doing there is although there's some home components to it. You're sort of talking about how you're, it's a reality of life that we're working from home and that you're talking about how that connection is made, not necessarily home theaters and home automation. Yeah. You know, CD is our partner at ISC. Um, so, you know, we're, we, we see them as partners. We see a joint mission to advance the uh, industry, to advance uh, the adoption of AV to create outcomes. Um, the uh, the Cedia show is now an Emerald Expositions show. Yeah. Um, holds the Cedia name. Um, the it, I think I think when you look at uh, look at our lives. I mean, I mean, I started my day in a waiting room at a at an auto shop. That's why you and I delayed this. But I was working, fully yeah. working. I mean, the only reason I couldn't have done this recording there is because I didn't want to talk to in, in the waiting room. Um, but otherwise, it's fully functional. Um, I, I, think, I think some of these definitions of barriers based on space definition um, just are irrelevant at this point. I've got a significant percentage of my staff that's teleworking on a regular basis, that's working in remote places. Uh, are they working in an office or are they working in their home? Um, I think it's about integrating life. Mm -hmm. well, I yeah, I think my work. And I think that's going to resonate well with everyone because I think a lot of us do that. Um, I uh, was um, injured last week and could not teach uh, in person my classes at UNC and I taught them the way we're doing this by Zoom and I was able to see 4K on my side, 4K on their side. I was able to see them, they were able to see me. And although the experience wasn't exactly the same, it was about 90%. I think the students were perfectly fine with me not being there, quite honestly. Um, and, uh, and I set sort of up a virtual uh, studio in my, uh, in my house, and it worked really well. So I think that's a fact of life. And five years ago, you just had to cancel class. And uh, canceling class would have been, uh, would have been a, a big hit because our semester is split in half here at UNC. And uh, so I couldn't, I, I couldn't ca cancel two class. I wouldn't be able to teach all I had to teach. So I think that's one example where, where an integrated life matters because you're not going to be able to go to the office all the time and you're not going to be able to go to, to teach all the time. You're going to have to do it from wherever you are um, because things just happen. And now that we have the technology to do that, we should be doing it. So I think I commend the VIX on that. I think that you have a great opportunity to really bring this out and, and tell that story as a catalyst for the entire industry to help carry all the manufacturers along as opposed to just a few. So uh, I'm excited about where VIX is. Thanks for this update. I really appreciate you taking the time, of course, to get more involved. 
I would highly recommend it. Personally, I have a love for the educational side. I grew up in that side. I, I, th I feel like I helped the industry grow uh, as part of that educational commitment um, in some small way, uh, along with a bunch of other great people that are, that are part of the educational programs. Uh, go to avixa.org to get involved, avixa.org. And of course, go to infocomshow.org and go ahead and sign up. You need to go ahead and register. Uh, it's going to be a big show. Uh, you need to make your reservations early so you can stay as close as possible to the convention center, although you have great transportation. It's just a lot easier when you can walk there if you can. Um, and uh, Dave, have a great day and thanks for doing this today. My pleasure, Gary. Always great to talk to you. And uh, thanks everyone for joining us and uh, have a great uh, week. Have a great year and we'll see you at Infocom.